It's a field of dreams for children with special needs. We'll be talking about the Miracle League coming up next on Carolina People. Good morning. Welcome to Carolina People. This morning we're in Myrtle Beach. We're at the Fox 43 studio and we're focused on the Miracle League. We're visiting with its executive director, Stephanie Ross. Good morning, Stephanie. Good morning. Thanks so much for being Thank with us this morning. Thank you for having me. Incredible opportunity to highlight you, but particularly to highlight the Miracle League and the Field of Dreams right, uh, right behind us. This is really exciting. Thanks Thank so much you. for coming sure. in. Sure, no problem. Can we talk real quick about yourself? Uh, are you originally from the area? I'm originally from Northern Virginia, but I have been here on the Grand Strand for the past five years. Great. You have family here in the area? I don't. I have family in Northern Virginia and Atlanta. Oh. So I'm in between. Do they, uh, the family in Atlanta and Northern Virginia, come to come to visit you, or do you uh, head back home? Uh? Um, both. We do. We try to share holidays, um, but they always come for Miracle League events, special events. They love coming, and it is a middle point between D.C. and Atlanta, so they like to spend a lot of time in Myrtle Beach. Exciting. What brought you to the area, Stephanie? Um, I came for school. I started school here and then loved it and I've been here ever since. When you say you came for school, uh, this was for Coastal? Um, I started at Ori Georgetown, Ori Georgetown. and then I, I finished up with some homeschooling and nutrition. Great. Exciting. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. I, I, I uh, normally research things before and I should <laughs> know okay. where, where folks attended school. So you did, you did uh, homeschooling and nutrition? Uh-huh. And uh, any other uh, f focus area? I started off in special education, but then wanted to focus on nutrition with uh, people with special needs. Right. So I ended up, um, and I'm still finishing up homeschool because I am working full time. So it's kind of tough with working and doing school. So at home, it's great. And that focus on uh, people with with special needs enabled you. Uh, is that did that tie into your uh, desire to get in with the miracle? Definitely. Miracle? Um, I couldn't have asked for a better position or a better job at this time. This is what I had dreamed about my whole life, is working um, with children and with children with special needs. So I feel very lucky to have the opportunity to do what I'm doing at the time. Great. Had you had any other positions uh, locally prior to coming on with the Miracle League? Um, I did. I worked, well, actually, I worked in um, North Carolina as a rehabilitation specialist, which okay. was working with adult um, people with special needs and that's where I found that I really loved the position and wanted to keep doing that. That's wonderful. When did you, um, uh, can you, uh, when did you find out about the Miracle League and can you share with the viewers uh, really what, what we're talking about today? Sure. A friend of the family, Paul Booth, who I've known since I uh, moved to Myrtle Beach, he's a business owner of WESI, uh, he had been in his house one day watching a sports show, and they said, please don't leave. You don't want to miss this ne next episode. So he sat back down, and it's just really funny how things happen. But the next special was on the Miracle League out of Conyers, Georgia, and it was HBO Real Sports. And he saw the special, and he said it was the most touching show he's ever seen in his life. Mm -hmm. And he knew I had the um, connection with, he, you know, he knew I wanted to work with this type of thing. So um, we hired a board, or well, he got a board together, and then the board hired me as executive director. Mm -hmm. And um, two weeks later, we went down and saw their opening day in Conyers and fell in love with the program. And um, he was dedicated to say, you know, I'm going to start this in Myrtle Beach. Wow. And that's how it started. So the Miracle League uh, had not even fully kicked off yet down right. in Conyers, Georgia. Um, it was actually, I think, their second season, but it was their first season on their turf because <laughs> they did do a season on a regular field with dirt, which obviously didn't work out well with the wheelchairs and the walkers. Right. And then they got the special field built, and we were down for their opening day, and it was the most amazing thing you could have seen. Um, I mean, Paul just, he, he said, this is going to happen. Whatever it takes, we're going to do this. Wow. Stephanie, that's huge. So Paul saw this special mm -hmm. on HBO. Mm -hmm. He then knew you had an interest in mm -hmm. working with the people with special needs. He, y'all put, uh, or he put a board together, mm -hmm. and, and you, they essentially uh, handpicked you. How exciting! Right, I was so excited. I just feel so lucky and blessed to have the opportunity to do it. Absolutely. Now, how does the Mer how does the Grand Strand Miracle League interface with the group out of Conyers, Georgia, and have they set up other 
Well, what their the plan was, was in January of that year, it was 2001, or 2002, I guess, they would go national. Mm -hmm. um, this special brought so much attention that they went national that August, and mm -hmm. um, they had over hundreds of calls from people seeing that special. How do we start this? How do we get this going? Mm -hmm. So um, it went a little quicker than they expected, but um, we are proud to say we are the second field in the nation and there's about 35 to 50 that are in process, some stage oh, of construction. Myrtle B, or Grand Strand mm -hmm. is number two. Number two. And there are 35 to 50 uh, uh, being planned out Hopefully right now. Hopefully having a spring or fall season of this next upcoming year. Wow. How long does the season run, Stephanie? Um, right now we do eight weeks in the spring and eight weeks in the fall, and it runs on Saturdays. And as we pick up, like in Conyers, they have 200 children. Mm -hmm. And as the children pick up, you start doing one night a week or two nights a week just to get the games in. But right now, with 60 children, we're doing Saturdays um, for eight weeks in the fall and eight weeks in the spring. So it's 16? I mean, is that each Saturday? Wow. Uh -huh. Each Saturday, yeah. 16 games is what the kids get to play. That's amazing. Throughout the year. Right. How many uh, children are on each team? We try to do between 10 and 15 kids per team because mm -hmm. of uh, the children do have more illness and more problems than you know, the original Little League, so we would try to get extra kids out there to fill the teams and to make sure there's enough kids out on the field. Um, you know, nine kids usually play on a baseball team, but we like to put 10 to 15, and they all play out there at the same time. If you were going to give the viewers the goal for the Miracle League, if there was a, a mission statement, mm -hmm. uh, whether it was the Conyers, Georgia national base mission statement right. or, or the Grand Strand a Miracle League mission statement, right. what, what would that be? What we say is that um, we are an organization, a nonprofit organization that provides a recreational opportunity for children with special needs, and we specialize in baseball with this specially designed field with synthetic turf um, that's accessible for wheelchairs and walkers. Mm -hmm. And the the league, the Grand Strand League, became a reality in. Uh, you, you said you all were down there January o two. We kickoff. were down August because I told you it got started right. a little bit faster. So we were down in August. Um, I got hired in September of two thousand and one, right. and we had our opening day with the first pitch thrown out on April two thousand and two. Wow! So they said, "Well, we are the second, so there's no one to compare to." But they said that was record breaking time of building the field. That's amazing. The first to toss was pitched April 02. Mm -hmm. You had a lot of folks in town that day? Oh uh, yeah, we had such a great turnout. I mean the stands were full, all the kids were out there playing. We had over a hundred volunteers sign up that day to be My buddies God. or to help with the merchandise. Um, you know, opening day was great and we tried to push that through the season to keep getting people out to support the children. Did you have all 60 children signed up mm -hmm. that first day? Yeah, we were amazed. We thought yeah, we'll have 20 kids come out, and it'll be right. a great day, and we'll all have fun. And we had 60 kids show up that opening day. Wow. And with uh, people moving or, you know, throughout the year, other things coming up, we have an uh, average of about 65 now with some new kids and some kids dropping off. Is there room for more? Oh, definitely. Really? Yeah. <laughs> wow. We want as many kids as, you know, we'll, I'll be out there every night if I have to, you know, to play games. We want, um, our goal is to have 40 more kids by the fall season, which is in a few weeks, or the spring season, I'm sorry, which is in a few weeks, and um, 100, I think, would be great for our next season. That would get more, everything, you know, more money, more fans, more volunteers, right. uh, more kids involved, but um, I don't know if you've known, but it, within Georgetown and Horry County, there's 10,000 kids that qualify for our program. Right. So we've got 60, and we just want, you know, we built this field, and it's a very expensive field, and it's right. there for the kids. We just want to make sure they they know about the opportunity. Yeah, yeah. What, so there's potentially 10,000 10, children mm -hmm. with special needs only mm -hmm. in Ori and Georgetown County mm -hmm. alone. Right. Would you take uh, children from other areas oh, of definitely. South Carolina or the Carolinas? Right. Um, we do have some kids. I think we have a few kids from Brunswick. Uh -huh. uh, also, you know, from more inland coming an hour, hour and a half. Um, so as far as the parents want to drive, we'll take them. We, we don't want to deny any children. Wow. And, and for preparation for the parents and for the children, um, if, if, if the activities would be almost exclusively on those Saturdays. I know you said you mm -hmm. could be out there every night. Right. But the active, the primary focus, and for folks who are traveling more than an hour, right. uh, 
uh, yeah, knowing definitely. they could come in on, on Saturday. Saturdays, some of the parents try to make a day of it. You know, they mm -hmm. come out, they have the games, they spend some time in Myrtle Beach and then go back. And they enjoy it, and they say they have no problems with um, the drive just to get their kids an activity because they don't have any activity outside of school at this time, mm -hmm. you know, besides Special Olympics and things like that. But this is a league that is ongoing. It's not a one-time event each year. Right. That is amazing. Mm -hmm. Now, who is eligible to participate in the league? Um, right now, we have eligible players between ages 3 and up into their 20s. You know, right now we have some kids that go into 20 up to 29 years old, which it all depends on them. You know, we're not going to deny anybody who's 29 just because we say 25. But mm -hmm. um, anywhere from three up is really what we say. And any special need, any disability, any age between that um, is what we accept. Wow. And you said there's no residency requirement. Mm -mm. They can come from anywhere. Anywhere. Or the, is, the, is the field in Conyers, Georgia the same way? Anyone who can mm -hmm. travel to that location, or is mm -hmm. this just indicative of the strand? Um, yeah, in Conyers, they do have that. And also, they're building three fields in the Atlanta area. So they're wow. trying to focus on um, not having the children drive more than an hour. And that's our goal, too, here, is to build this field in every major city where the parents have the opportunity and they don't have to drive hours to get there. Sure, Just sure. like a regular Little League, you know, you How drive a few exciting. miles to get to your field, so. Yeah, Stephanie, this is so big. I, yeah. I, I don't think I understood the magnitude of it when Raymond Child originally talked to me about it in his yeah. office one day. Uh, we actually went in, some folks from the Heart Association and I went in to see him, and at the end of him saying that he would commit to do something for the Heart Association, he pulled out a packet <laughs> on the Miracle League and said, this is something that you guys really need to think about. Yeah. Of course, the director of the Heart Association is there, and <laughs> she's looking at me. and you know. But obviously, he made a, a big impact just uh -huh. by providing that literature that day. It was very exciting. Good. Yeah, this Raymond's is... been great with our organization. Um, he just joined on before last season, so... Um, we are so lucky to have him yeah. with us now and what he's done for the organization. And some of the other board members, uh, Stephanie, how did you all go about uh, assembling a board? Well, what we tried to do, and we always say we did probably did things backwards, but our first priority was to get the field built and to get the kids out playing. Right. And that's all Paul worried about. He didn't really care about the business part of it. He just wanted to get it done. He said, if I have to put the money up, it'll be done. Mm -hmm. So um, we got the field built or, you know, we started building the field, and then he started getting uh, business associates of his that he knew would be instrumental in the community in helping us get mm -hmm. things donated for the field and things like that. And that's where he um, started choosing some of his, I guess, clients or business associates. And then right. through them, they contacted other people who they thought would be good for the program. Mm -hmm. And right now we are still, you know, looking to recruit board members always. Great. Um, that's how we found Raymond through the city and things. Mm -hmm. So um, we're always looking for people who would like the opportunity to help out. Stephanie, when's the next season going to begin and how long? You said it'll run eight weeks. It begins exactly when? March 29th, which okay. is very soon, um, is our opening day for mm -hmm. the spring season. And then we'll go eight weeks every Saturday after March 29th. And every opening day, we try to make it a special event for the kids, um, just mm -hmm. like a regular Little League would. Yeah. And we have all the teams out there. We announce all the kids. Um, every game, we have a PA system. They're announced when they come up to bat. Wow. That's the best part for them. <laughs> they yeah. love it, I'm to hear sure. their names when they come up. And um, we always try to have a special guest for all of our game days, just to, to be there to support the kids. And um, But opening day is always a great event to come out to and really see what it's all about. Sure, and you're holding registration now. Mm -hmm. We hold registration at any time, and children can always sign up during the season if they find out. We don't have any restrictions on that. But we are holding registration um, right now, and it's March 1st and March 8th. It's going to be an open house of the field, and um, the program parents can come out and take a look at the field, meet some of the coaches and volunteers, the other children, um, that's when we'll have them sign up if they want to. You know, right. it's no pressure to sign up, but if they want to sign up, we'll have them sign up and they'll get their uniforms and um, they'll meet their coaches and then they'll be ready to start on March 29th. And the field is located where, Stephanie? The field's located right in the middle of the Myrtle Beach schools. It's the Pepper Gettings Complex. Right. And it's so centrally located that it's great. It's right behind Myrtle Beach Intermediate School and it's right off 33rd and Oak Street. Okay. So we have um, a great location, and we thank the Horry County Schools for that location and also right. the city of Myrtle Beach, who helps us maintain it and 
work the program. Right, and you said registration March 1st and March, March 8th. 1st, so they could, it, March 1st, March 8th, right mm -hmm. out at the field, and it's going to be between 1 and 4. We're going to have snacks and drinks for the kids, some type of entertainment. Um, we're also teaming up with Special Olympics that same day to have um, our kids, you know, look at their activities, have their kids look at our activities, try and get these kids something throughout the year to be doing mm -hmm. besides, you know, spring and fall. And Special Olympics has every sport, so um, we're teaming up to try and really do good for that day. That's wonderful. Now, for, for viewers in the PD or viewers in other parts of the area mm -hmm. who uh, may not have been able to make it this past Saturday, March 1st, they have the opportunity to come Mm -hmm. uh, this upcoming Saturday, March 8th. Right. I mean, that's a great day to come down. Obviously, uh, the AIDS walk is that uh, that day. It's right. a great day for a lot of folks to be in right. town down in the Myrtle Beach Pavilion. What time will registration be? Um, 1 o'clock, and we'll be out there 1 to 4, <laughs> or as long as we need to stay out. Um, they can just come out and take a look. Even if you don't have a child, just come out and take a look. It's open house, you know. See what it's all about. We'll have information out. And just seeing the field and be able to, being able to stand on it and really see what it's like is great. And folks could call you, uh, Stephanie. Mm -hmm. Parents could call you. Or what, what would be the best number to reach you? Uh, my office number is 448-7712. And also, uh, we have everything available on our website. We have registration on our website. We have upcoming fundraisers, events, the schedule for the season, um, pictures, sponsors. But our website is uh, gsmiracleleague.org. And that stands for the Grand Strand Miracle League, but that's gsmiracleleague.org. And that number again, 843-448-7712. Mm -hmm. Great. Good. And my email and the phone number is on the website if anyone wants to take a look at that also. I've always got my email going, and uh, that's great, too, to contact me. I want to ask you a couple more questions. Sure. The, um, uh, you said there's no limit on the number of players that can sign up. Right. Or is there a limit? I mean, 10,000 kids well, in Georgetown County alone, not counting even potential folks from out the PD or mm -hmm. uh, southeastern North Carolina who travel down. This is an incredible What we would love to say is that we have too many kids, right. and then we would have the opportunity to build another field. And that's what they're doing in Atlanta. Um, 200, they think, has hit the for that field mm -hmm. so now they're building you know in Atlanta northern Atlanta and surrounding the area so that they can the children up there you know it's a lot more than here but we would love to say we have too many children and then we would feel like we've we got to build another yeah. field exactly <laughs> yeah. exactly well and can you tell the viewers real quick how these special how special needs children are enabled to play baseball okay it's a big deal uh, what we do is we match up buddies and these are volunteers who come out. This can be children, adults, um, anybody who wants to come out and give the gift of baseball to a child with special needs. They come out and they get paired up to a child or, you know, an adult. And what they do is they stick with them throughout the game. They go to bat with them. Um, if they're in a wheelchair, they push them. If they're, you know, on a walker, they help them field the balls. If whatever their special need is, and then we get the parents with the buddy and we make sure they know, you know, what needs to be done or... Um, what special needs that they do have so that everything's safe. And we've never had an accident. We've never had any problems with the different ages that we have out there. And what we have is a buddy that becomes friends with this child and comes back every Saturday. Wow. And they look forward to seeing that friend every mm -hmm. Saturday, too. So it's become a incredible program. The buddy program has been almost as instrumental as the baseball for the kids. You know, yeah. it's a friend that is outside of baseball that they can call or they can, you know, have over on birthdays or holidays or whatever it may be. Wow, yes. And some other roles that volunteers could fill? We do have other roles. We have a merchandise stand where, stand where we sell all merchandise, T-shirts, hats. Um, we also have a concession stand. All of these proceeds go directly to the kids in the field. Right. Um, and also, you know, the buddy program. But... We, the main thing that I ask when people call and say, you know, well, I want to volunteer, but I've never played baseball, and I don't know if I'm right for the children, I say, just come and sit in the stands. Right. And for you to right. be there in the stands cheering these kids on would mean more to them than, you know, anything you would imagine. Mm -hmm. So being in the stands, in a full set of stands, and everyone cheering when they come up to bat really means the world to them. That must be a powerful feeling. It is. We're visiting with Stephanie Ross the executive director of the Grand Strand Miracle League. You can call her to volunteer. You could call her if you had a special needs child uh, to possibly register them. 
843-448-7712. Or you can go online at gsmiracleleague.org. Stephanie, thanks so much Thank for being with so us this much. morning. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. And thanks for Thank everything you. you do. Sure. Stay tuned to Raymond Child and more Carolina people coming up next. Good morning. Welcome back to Carolina People. We're visiting with Raymond Child, one of the directors of the Grand Strand Miracle League. Good morning, Raymond. Thanks Good so much morning, for being Greg. with us this morning. It's a pleasure to be with Tough you. Tough to follow Stephanie Russ, isn't it? <laughs> I just can stay home and follow she Stephanie was, Russ. Yes, she's she great. Cracker Jack, absolutely. What prompted you to get personally involved with the Miracle League, Raymond? Uh, we heard about it, and we went out to see what it was all about. And once you get out there and you get involved and you see how what a wonderful program it is for the kids, and then you see how the parents are so happy to see their kids being able to do something that the other that they've never been able to do before in their life and participate in an activity like this. It was just all I could do was just and then be thankful that all my children were healthy and my grandchildren were healthy and I just said, I've got to get involved. And I did. And that's basically where it all came from. Of course that's my wife was pushing good too. She loves this thing as much as I do. Jerry does. Yes, very much so. Wow. Well, I could, you all are almost probably co-directors of the uh, Grand Strand Miracle Well, she tells me what to do, and I do it. I and mean, that's been a normal <laughs> thing for 35 years in my house. So. Wow, <laughs> Raymond. And you are, I mean, with all the time uh, you commit to your, uh, to associate insurers and so many activities in your life, so many charities that come to you, like the Heart Association and others, to be able to commit time, are you still able to remain actively involved as the director of the Miracle League? Oh, very much so. I wouldn't give that up for anything in the world unless they throw me off the board. I just think mm. it's the most wonderful project I've ever been involved with. Mm -hmm. Has the cost of construction been um, been completed yet for uh, for building the Field of Dreams right behind us? No, we're still working on trying to get enough money to pay off our debt service. And our major project is the uh, brick. Selling bricks with the uh, names on them of mm -hmm. your children or anybody else you want to. Uh, You've think. got that that brick there. It says support our project. Buy a brick. You can buy a brick. An individual can buy a brick for fifty dollars. A corporation can buy them for two hundred dollars. And we have nothing against a corporation buying ten bricks or an individual mm. buying ten bricks. We need this money to pay off our debt service. Once we get our debt service off, we can really go in and do, do a much better job for our children. We'll have more money to be able to, to do other things with. But the, right now, has a strap, and we need people's support to help us pay off this field. And this would be a good way to do it. And we think this brick project is the best thing we've come up with. This lately. is the this is the walk of faith, right? Mm -hmm. And what 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 would a business get? I mean, they would they would get their name on the brick, or they, they could would do get it their in name honor? and their logo, and they could do anything they want to, and then people can do it in honor of their grandchildren or whatever other thoughts they might have on. It. Mm -hmm. Do you have plans, or does the Grand Strand Miracle League have plans to expand further, Raymond? We do. We're uh, now running 16 weeks of baseball. Uh, this Christmas we had the first annual Christmas party for our uh, Miracle League. We had approximately, with brothers, sisters, and parents, approximately 100 to 125 people show up. The Women's Club helped us with it very much. Uh, Damon uh, donated the food. Pizza Hut donated pizzas. And Santa Claus arrived on a fire truck. And if you could have seen those children going out of that building to see the Santa Claus on the fire truck, it was it's something that you have to be there to, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, to really enjoy. And it was a, a privilege and honor to be part of that. And we're also now in the process, uh, Steffi and I are meeting with the women's club Thursday night to plan an Easter egg hunt for these kids. Mm -hmm. So we're going to try to get as many activities in and make this as much of a, 12 months deal as we possibly can work out. Right. Right now you have the two seasons, the spring yeah. and the fall, eight weeks, eight Saturdays. Do you regularly attend the games? Every game. I don't think I missed one last year. Wow. Raymond, that's fantastic. And, and being out there, can you give just a sense of what that's like? Uh, it's the greatest feeling in the world. I've done uh, a little bit of everything. I have uh, go out and I we have what we call cover up people when you 
to go out with the children who are really handicapped and say in wheelchairs and someone stands in front of them so the ball won't hit them. I've gone out and done that. Stephanie has given me the privilege to be on the PA in which I probably have messed up, but I've had the most fun doing that I've ever seen in my whole life. Mm -hmm. So we get right interested in it, right? Uh, we participate and we've got great volunteers and we have a great leader. So we, we're not worried about us being a success. We just need to get our debt services down and we like to uh, be able to get someone that some large corporation or someone who would love to have the field named after them. We're hoping the Rotary Club will come through and do that, but we could name the field after them for $125,000. It would be their field, and uh, they would be doing a miracle. That would be a true miracle. That would be fantastic. Raymond, does any one memory stand out in your mind of all the experiences of being involved early on, you and Jerry getting active and, and being out there? Any one memory stand out in your mind? Well, for me personally, it's, a, it's the greatest feeling that I've ever had. And secondly, it, my wife talks to all the parents. She sits in the stands and does that. And when we go home and talk about it, she said the parents just love it. And see the joy and the smile on a parent's face when their kid runs the bases and maybe catches a ball and things like that and cheers for their child. It's, I think it's just astronomical. Uh, the kids are great, and I enjoy them. They call me the pizza man and the donut man because that's what I do when I come on Saturday is bring those things. So that's, I don't, they don't even know who I am except I'm the donut man or the right. pizza man. So that's, that's, that's my life history. We're visiting with both the pizza man and the donut man. <laughs> Raymond Child, the president of Associated Insurers, who's taken a heck of a lot of his time. He and his wife together, Jerry, committed a lot of their time to make uh, the field of dreams in the Miracle League a reality. Raymond, thanks so much for being with us this morning. It's a pleasure morning. to be here, and we appreciate you letting us come and speak to the people. Absolutely. Stay tuned to more Carolina People coming up next. thank Stephanie Russ, Raymond Child, and Paul Booth for helping make the Grand Strand Miracle League a reality.